Friday. It's Wednesday. I mean, already it feels like Friday because it's a short week. This is Mitch Ewan, your host for Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And I'm really pleased to have Maria Tomei for the Hawaii State Energy Office. And she's the managing director, of energy efficiency and renewable energy. So welcome to the show, Maria. Thank you. It's and wonderful to be here and it should be Friday. <laughs> it should be Friday. Hey, happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. So Maria is going to talk to us today about energizing Hawaii's workforce. That's a really interesting topic. And uh, she's got some slides and a lot of information to impart. I've had a quick preview and it looks like a really interesting uh, program. So Maria, tell us about energizing Hawaii's workforce. How are we going to okay, do that? Thanks. What does it mean? Okay, thanks. Well, as you know, the Hawaii State Energy Office is now attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism. And so, you know, whereas previously, when we talked about Hawaii's energy future, it was very often about our resources and technologies, and we didn't worry too much about who was going to be doing the work. Right. Um, because, you know, even if you're doing a construction project, if people had to be brought in for that, you know, our unemployment rate was like 2%, you know, or 3%. And so there, you know, there wasn't a lot of ex, extra um, folks looking for, for work, uh, but things are different now. And so we um, we're looking at three parts. We started off looking at, okay, we've got a bunch of big energy projects that are phase one, HECOs, RFP on the Big Island, on Maui, on Oahu. Those have employment potential in the short term. You know, once they start building out next year, that's an opportunity. And we started to wonder, you know, do Hawaii's um, workers have the necessary skills? And also if we have a bunch of projects now with phase two as well, you know, how do those skills match up with um, the needs of the project. So we started looking at the big projects and reaching out to folks. And then of course, there's also the fact that if we're not focusing on tourism as much, um, what else is there? And energy really is a continuing need and we are producing our energy here, you know, as you know, we're not connected to the, <laughs> the mainland, right? So right. we, you know, we do have a continuing need for energy, great opportunities. I think um, we could call it vast untapped reserves of efficiency. Right. <laughs> you yeah, know, sure. every, everything that, um, that we're using energy for, you know, we should look at and figure out if there's a way to do it more efficiently. And now is actually a good time to do it if we can direct some of that energy into that, um, that effort. The third thing, of course, is the potential with CARES Act funding or other federal funding that might come into Hawaii. Now, you may recall back in 2009, 2008, you know, when the Recovery Act funding was directed to states to help them with economic recovery, there was a lot of funding that had to move very quickly. And so if that happens again, we wanted to be prepared, at least know what kinds of jobs are there in the energy sector, what kinds of um, potential for earn while you learn or skills development, you know, whether it's a short term or a longer term. So um, I've got some slides as mentioned, and I'll just go through the phases and the approach that we're taking to answer the question about, you know, what role does energy play in workforce development? And conversely, what role do Hawaii's people have in the new energy area? Because there is some new stuff happening here too. So I have a top level question before we get into the slides. And uh, let's talk about the funding for this for, for a start. Is, uh, you know, you mentioned the CARES Act funding. I understand it has to be spent before the end of the year. Is that actually spent? or encumbered or committed to a project? My understanding is it was, it's gotta be spent. And so that's why there are several, several approaches happening simultaneously. And so I'm just talking about the one that, you know, I, I, we had heard about and got us interested because it does talk about the innovation space. Right. Um, so, you know, maybe we can go through the slides I have. Um, sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just wanted to know 
top level, you know, what the, what the yes. boundaries, what the my, boundaries my are. My understanding was spent by, but then again, that's the CARES Act, which was, you know, kind of the beginning, right? right. But there is continuing discussion about a need for more, possibly. So it's possible that whatever we develop for the CARES Act funding may continue or expand if additional funding um, okay. becomes available. Got it. Yeah. So let's okay. uh, throw up your first slide here, Maria. Okay. So we looked um, for the NASIO, National Association of State Energy Officials, had done a study on what the energy jobs in America are. And right. we found that interesting as a starting point, right? So sure. it's a national study and it was using um, federal data. And so in the energy sector, they identified in Hawaii, the, um, I guess we can go back to the slide there. Thanks. So electric power generation, they, they estimate about 6,000 jobs and in the energy efficiency side, also about 6,000 jobs. Um, so these are, ex you know, this is the existing economy as it was in 2019, right? These are 2018 and 2019 numbers that were published in 2020. But you get a sense. I mean, it's not going to take up all of the missing jobs throughout the economy, but it helps, right? So to understand what exists is, is very helpful. So next slide, please. Now, when you look at energy efficiency, You've got your lighting, your HVAC, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. And then you've got high efficiency and renewable heating and cooling, advanced materials and insulation and others. Now, if you think about our buildings and you think about all the vast reserves of efficiency, there is a lot that we could be doing in this area. Right. And so if funding becomes available and we have the workforce available or can, you know, if we need more folks to be trained in this area, it provides lasting benefit, you know, because your buildings are actually using a lot of your energy. I think it was like 40% of the energy goes, I mean, electricity goes to um, building systems. And so um, that's, that's, that's a great area for us to focus on our own needs during this time when things are quiet and, you know, sure. we can do that it's for an ourselves. Investment, actually, it's an investment in ourselves. Yeah, because, exactly. uh, you know, you're reducing uh, you're reducing your energy requirements. So it's a, that, that's great. Yeah. yeah, you know, you if the heat comes into your building and you're trying to air condition it out, that's spending a lot of money, you know, and so some of the energy efficiency programs that we're already paying for on our energy bills, yeah. you know, I, it, uh, the value of every penny in the energy efficiency area that displaces a kilowatt hour. I mean, some of your displacement measures, it's really one cent or two cents or a few cents for a kilowatt hour displaced instead of paying you know 20 something or 30 something cents when you have to buy that electricity so and think anyway, of all the uh, buildings that the state government has to keep cool you know it's like millions <laughs> and millions of dollars that uh, you know we could be saving and, and putting back into our programs so you know yep. right now we really have to be smart now because we have no slack yeah so, so finding places where people could be doing that work, saving the saving right. money, reducing our emissions, and putting people to work is. is and you can scary. actually see how the money is going to support jobs. So right. It's not some theory. It's actually you can actually see it happening in real time. So yeah. So then the question becomes: Well, is it easy to get the people with those skills? And in the energy sector, according to this report. Um, folks were saying that, yeah, there is a need for skills development. And so once again, if people have the time and the interest and we can find out what skills are needed and then working with the folks who provide the training, you know, it's an opportunity to strengthen this part of our economy. Right. So, um, and I think, you know, what, if people are interested in this, you know, this is a, a report that is available on, on the website. And I think I captured that in, in the first slide right. talking about this study. But, you know, the competition, you know, the employers gave the following reasons for the difficulty is competition, small applicant pool. That is true. But then again, now we have more applicants possibly and possibly an interest in right. this area. Lack of experience, training, or technical skills, we can fix that, <laughs> right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. 
Exactly. And, um, the industry specific knowledge, skills and interests, you know, this is all related. So getting the word out that, you know, the energy sector is still is still going strong and there are opportunities here. So just, just a comment. So people who have been in the tourism industry here in Hawaii, you know, everybody says it's not going to snap right back. It's going to take quite a long time. So, you know, maybe and now's the time be really looking and saying, do I want another career? Because this one kind of looks a little bit shaky right now. So maybe I should be looking for something a little bit more stable. And, yeah. uh, you know, if you're, uh, you know, if you're interested, then this is great that the, you know, state energy office is putting forward this kind of a program to, you know, develop new skills that have jobs available. So, so now we're talking about the CARES Act funding. Right. So this, this is the one that um, has to be spent by the end of the year. And um, this is just an example that there was, you know, media coverage about this. But like anything else, if you are creating something new, you have to figure it all out and get things in place. Um, and right. so at the moment, there is actually, there are several efforts um, going along and you can apply. So the next slide shows the Aloha Connects Innovation. So there are several programs. One is um, through Kupu and it really focuses on um, outdoor type of activities, conservation work, agricultural work. But there's another piece of this, which is the innovation side, the energy side. These are things, as, as it says here, things that are not connected to tourism necessarily trying to develop the other sides of Hawaii's economy that have great potential. So I have, a, I have a question before we go to the next slide. So uh, circling back a little bit on the money side. So it has to be all spent by the end of the year. So when did you actually start working? The, when did the funds become available and when did you start like expending money and what kind of things do you have to spend it on, you know, priming, priming the program up? How, how can you work through $10 million in like, six months <laughs> actually <laughs> they have not started spending it per se yet the program period is is from september through december okay. so it'll be three months and that's why it's kind of like an internship it's an opportunity for folks who are interested in trying this out you know one of the beauties of the internships you know call usually it's in college right you go and work someplace for several months and you get familiar with what the work is like, you develop some skills, they see if your skills and interests and abilities fit with what they need. And it's not like you got hired and, it, and then you left the job, really. It's a training kind of opportunity. But in this case, the people who probably are most likely to apply for it, they already know some of the basic job skills, you know, show up on time, <laughs> dress appropriately, you know, the business, you know, the whole business yeah, and sure. work ethic part of it is already there. And it's only the skills piece, but it is an opportunity for them to get into a new area and to get some get some new skills. So it's it's the same benefits as you have, you know, the college students who do internships are able to get this, but it's um, it's an opportunity for a broader pool of applicants. And so just because if it says intern, don't don't think it's got to be fresh out of school, fresh out of high school. You know, it's for any displaced displaced workers who are interested. Okay. So the next slide gives a little more information on the industries. You can see there aerospace agri-tech, aquaculture, clean energy, creative industries, healthcare, local foods production and manufacturing, natural resource management, STEM fields, sustainable communities, cybersecurity, waste reduction, and more. And so basically anything that's not really tourism related, you know, the getting into the innovation economy is eligible for this. And so they're looking for displaced workers, recent graduates. And on the business side, they are actually inviting applicants to say, okay, I've, you know, I need workers. I would love somebody else is gonna pay the workers. Somebody else is gonna provide the health insurance for these workers, try them out very low risk um, right. for, the, for the companies. Okay, sounds so great. So on, <laughs> on the next slide, 
So this this is um, the contact e um, e well website and email for edahawaii.org. And then on the next slide is what you'll get if you go to that website. They're not exactly up and running yet. They have one more step. They're 90, 95% there. Right. But the contract still needs to be signed in order to actually launch and be able to so move do on. You, have a you know, guess, we're there developing it. Yeah. Do you have a best guess of when it's going to be ready? Oh, I, I don't. Yeah. A couple of weeks, I would say, is, is okay. when it would probably, you know, because everybody's working really hard to get, get the thing going. But the beauty of it is it's kind of the first step of what we hope will be followed on by more, you know, it, we hope that it will be a chance to show how it works so that it can expand and include even more companies and even more employees as it, you know, as more funding becomes available. So it's like taking a test drive. You're going to kick the tires, see what works well, what doesn't work well, tune it up. Yeah. So it's like really great by the time you've gone through the first phase. Yeah. So yeah. it's the innovation side of the innovation economy. They're inventing, <laughs> you know, so they should. Yeah. So, so I expect it will be, um, you know, a very, uh, very valuable opportunity to, to make use of this, the new, the new media, you know, and on the next slide, we can talk about, okay, so that's, that's something that's coming and will be very quick moving once it gets here. So keep, you know, so keep your eyes open next week or two, you know, maybe you'll see, see, and they can sign up now on that website. They can sign up the companies, the individuals who are interested can sign up. Okay. okay. So they get a notice this, when you're ready to rock and roll, correct? Right. Yeah. yeah. Now this, not that, but that's, you know, you don't have to wait. If you need a job now, Hawaii is hiring. Is, is the website that has a um, list of existing jobs. Now this is your traditional getting a job, right? right. There is also a um, opportunity here to find existing training. So it's not the CARES Act funding and you know, you're not gonna possibly run out of the opportunity at the end of the year. Um, so it's not as um, experimental, or I should say, it's really more traditional apply for the job or find the training, you know, you kind of know what you're going to be doing in this, right. you know, with the Hawaii is hiring website, although they are very, they're connected, you know, I mean, the Hawaii is small, right? And so you, you can do, you know, you can look on the Hawaii is hiring page and maybe get start started with that and also keep an eye out for the CARES Act funding opportunities as well. So I have a question before we go to the next slide is like, this brings up a question in my mind. So Here's like an organization that's already in place doing hiring and doing some training and all that. But, uh, you know, the first part of the program, how, how is this training going to be delivered? Are you, is UH going to be involved or, you know, how do we actually deliver this training to these folks? Or is it supposed to be like on the job training? They go to a company and then the company trains them up. How, how does that work? In, uh, I'm not, you know, I'm really not sure that there is just one model, and right. that would be a great topic for our next, <laughs> for sure. our next think yeah, tank, yeah. is to get those folks who are, you know, directly involved in that the delivery of these of these programs. Right. That, that would be a great question for them. Okay, I know that down on my pad. Next, yeah. next, next time we get together, because that by that time you'll know the answer, right? Right. right. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Okay, let's yeah. keep on going, I guess. Okay, so the, we, we were started talking a little bit about the potential for not just what exists, you know, the energy efficiency side of things or existing um, companies hiring to do work that is already there. There's this potential for the large projects. And so since this is a new and different area, we thought we should take a closer look at it. And people often say, well, I know there's a bunch of projects, how many jobs? And so we tried to estimate, and so these are the results of our estimates. So you've got construction jobs to build, you know, like the solar farms, you know, the energy storage projects. And then you've got a few jobs to operate them long, long term. But really, sure. since we're expecting that the, econ the most difficult time in our economy is in the next couple of years, we are particularly interested in the temporary jobs because those are well-paying construction jobs. And, yeah, and we'll if take you add them all together, it's about 5,000. Yeah, it, 
the solar farms don't get built in a week. I mean, this is a many months. It takes several project. months. <laughs> yeah, it takes a lot. Maybe five yeah. or six months to build a, you know, one of these megawatt scale solar farms. There's Very a lot true. involved in it. Yeah, definitely. And so, you know, we do not yet have the whole picture of it, um, okay. but we're, we're trying to also coordinate that because when, you know, we've got a critical mass, I believe, to actually keep this keep this going because if you have you know you look at the phase one projects or stage one there are eight of them right and then you've got the next one there are about 15 of those you know and so there will be some kind of a sequencing where yeah maybe you're doing the construction for one project but there's probably a, another one or two and then of course further phases as we get up to 100 percent renewable i mean we're we're looking at what 30 percent by the end of this year you know that's there's a lot more so we've got the energy efficiency side we've got rooftop solar as well um and you've got the large energy projects also the smart grid the electric vehicle chargers and a lot of other innovative work and some hydrogen thing possibly Mitch I don't know, for sure <laughs> so we do on our state energy office website have a renewable energy project map because you know if you're looking for work and you're wondering what projects are in your neighborhood whatever you know we thought it would be helpful to have maps of not only the projects that are coming up but also the ones that are in place and so this lets you search by technology, by island, even by the project name. You can zoom in on the map. You can um, download an Excel file of the projects. And you know, so we try to keep this updated based on what we are able to find in public announcements and those types of things. And so we hope that this can help not only the folks who are maybe looking for work, but also just interested in energy on their island or interested in the energy area to right. be informed about what's there. There's a lot of stuff that's already there and also what's coming. So to sum up our phased approach, we're looking for things that have immediate impact. And that's why we're trying to keep on top of what's coming out that's the funding available or training available for existing jobs um, and existing skills. Short-term strengthening, we're looking at, you know, making Hawaii's workforce able to access the training needed to not only do the work, but also make our buildings smarter and more efficient and get those projects um, done in a timely manner. And then long-term sustained benefits, we're also looking at how to keep things resilient, um, you know, the clean energy side of things, as well as uh, well integrated in, with the community. Because it's not just building stuff, it's also understanding and explaining how it all fits together. And we have one more slide to go. Yeah, oh, that's the, the that's that's obligatory. The, uh, <laughs> who was that? And where do we look? Yeah, great, great. Right. So anyway, I have uh, some more questions, of course. So um, I would think that uh, just speculating now, and you know, the, the uh, community college system should be, you know, purveyors of knowledge. So have you been talking to the? Uh, oh yes, colleges? definitely, definitely. Uh, in, in fact, yeah, they over over the years, you know, they have had excellent um, training programs available for everything yeah. from the solar installation to. You know the electricians and and um, you know the other skilled trades, and we're um, we actually have funding that has been put in place by the legislature the year before this most recent one to work with code officials, building code officials, to get them familiar oh, yeah, with new sure. technologies. Yeah, yeah. that's a great. You know, so there are always new training programs needed. The beauty of the community colleges is they're used to working with the industry, you know, so even in training mechanics, right, they work with the automakers um, and they actually have the training that is um, approved by the automakers for their specific technologies and their specific vehicles. And so you get your, you know, certifications and you get um, on hands on training. Now in the time of COVID, since this is a global pandemic, there is so much being done with distance learning 
that it really opens up an opportunity. And I know our community colleges are pursuing this as well. You know, you don't have to send people to a different state if you can bring that training here effectively. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. so that's, that's one of the questions we're asking, you know, when we're talking to the folks who um, have been thinking of bringing in experts, you know, or trained people from the mainland, it's like, okay, wait, where did they get their training? You know, if Hawaii people can get the training that those other folks had, you know, maybe not as many need to be brought in and maybe our own folks can develop that those skills here. You know, and so a lot of this distance learning um, capability, I think, is being put in place all over just out of necessity. And so I think it's moving along a lot faster than it would have um, normally. And since we're so far away, it really does, I think, um, reduce some of those geographic barriers. Right. So one of the also, big deals is getting the right sil the syllabuses and, and, you know, the course materials. So I just want to give you an, an example. I got to get my plug in for hydrogen. So uh, the Hawaii Community College on the Big Island actually took the initiative and reached out to me because they knew my buses would be operating soon. Of course, uh, you know, the Helion bus service, you know, they, they want to make sure that their, you know, a hydrogen bus can be maintained. It could be a battery electric bus, but I'm going to promote a hydrogen bus. And so uh, I'm working with the chancellor there to put together a course uh, for workforce development to support um, the buses. So where do you get the syllabus? Well, there's, you know, two really good sources on the mainland. There's Sunline Transport, who have a fleet of about 10 or 12 hydrogen buses. And they have uh, they have a whole training program, and you know I've been to the zero emission bus conference and uh, talked to them, and, and they're more than pleased to share. That's the thing I found amazing is like none of this competitive stuff and keeping it close to the chest. They're they're quite happy to to share their uh, course uh, materials with us. And I also reached out to General Motors, uh, who very kindly said, yeah. We're happy to share our, you know, uh, electric vehicle and hydrogen vehicle training program. So that's what we're going to try to do is to import, like you said, import the materials, maybe import like guest instructors to give the, you know, give the course, and then, uh, you know, and then train, you know, you know, train the trainer here. And and you know, the nice thing about Zoom, for example, is you can hit a record button and you can actually record the whole thing. So there, you've all, you know automatically have a course that you can yeah, get. Yeah, and definitely. The only other part of it would be like the hands-on part where they can actually, you know, take a fuel cell apart or whatever it is apart or, you know, I know how to install a battery. And uh, so there's ways to do that as well. So, you know, kind of uh, what you're doing, uh, what the energy office is doing is great. And I'm going to make sure the Hawaii Community College knows about it, about this program. And anybody else listening out here, if you have any bright ideas, I guess they should be contacting you, Maria, like if they have ideas on how they can train workforce. That's something yeah. that at least they should be talking to you guys about. So, I mean, maybe you might even want to put together like a little workshop it could be done online where we get interesting <laughs> parties just trading information because it's really, really, really effective. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's something we can be doing to leverage our technology and, uh, and get it out there. So I'll stop talking and give you a chance to react. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's that's exactly that's exactly in line with what we're trying to do. What's needed? What do we have? And how can we bring the pieces together, you know, especially in the energy in the energy space? And we, we, we don't need to reinvent the delivery mechanisms, you know, the, the apprenticeship program design. I mean, some people have figured that out. But what when, when money becomes available for us to direct to um, the work that needs to be done, we want to be prepared so that we can put the people and the jobs and the funding together. Well, on that happy note, we're <laughs> out of time. It okay. went by really quickly, didn't it? It always does. Yes. And I want to wrap up and say uh, this is a really great program that the Hawaii Energy uh, State Energy Office is putting together to help develop our workforce. And mm -hmm. I'd like to thank Maria. And you can put the last slide up so we remember how to contact her. And Thanks, Mitch. And we're going to say <laughs> aloha until next Wednesday. Thank you so much, Maria. Take care. Aloha.